And welcome back, everyone, to our final game of the evening here at Overdrive Week number five, Platinum Division. We have Illumination Empire taking on Bemos Commandos, who have been riding a little bit of a struggle bus here so far this season, but it's always a good time to start a winning streak. Alongside me, once again, is McBree. We had a very interesting first game for the two of us, wouldn't you say? Yeah, very uh, blood bloodbath. Uh, especially with the Aatrox top lane getting a lot of leads, but uh, yeah, it was a super fun game to watch and definitely to cast. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see where these picks and bands are going to for, for, uh, go to, if I can use my words here tonight, as we did talk a little bit about this mid laner for Illumination, who is infamous, to say the least, for his champion pool. Yeah, especially with the last game that they played to this uh, tonight. Sorry, they we, they put them on the Wukong, and it wasn't the greatest performance. Sale not you know putting on his dancing shoes, not doing amazingly. So if they can grab this talent for him, I, I think that this will be a, a more even game at least. You were saying? <laughs> oh, there goes a the talent. My heart hurts just a little bit. This should still be a fun game. I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they maybe switch him off of the Wukong, or even, you know, maybe he gets a better performance on the Wukong. I am looking forward to seeing how Bemo's, uh, Bemo's commandos are going to do, as Illumination just as ta it did take a loss recently, you know, the last game that they did play, so maybe there is a little bit of a mental boom there, and maybe team Bemo's can take initiative and get a little bit more motivation to try and take this Ooh, game. Ooh, they're actually taking away both of Sale's oh, top two champions. Yikes. Um, okay, I'm trying to, trying to, I, I actually need to go look, because I actually can't remember. Is he just AFK mid lane? I mean, he plays, like, Vlad and Fizz, so. Uh, I mean, he might see the TF. Fi uh, Fizz, TF, Echo is actually the one I would put my bet on based on his win rates. Mm -hmm. uh, Baby is, once again, going to be picking up that Graves in the jungle, so I am a fan of seeing that as Graves... I think we all agree is a broken jungler right now with just the sheer amount of damage and speed and the amount of pressure he can put out in that jungle position. I'm more of a proponent for Kindred jungle as that champion wins every 1v1 trade possible in the jungle. Uh, and I mean there's a little bit of RNG with your marks going off so you're really hoping that you know your jungle clear ends up being in the same path as your uh, mark especially on the scuttle but uh, for right now I think Kindred level three ends up beating a lot of other junglers. Yeah, but you always do need to be worrisome about Kindred because if you ever initiate a trade with your, some of your spells on cooldown, as we're seeing introducing, trying to introduce the end of some people picking up that Nocturne while Handsome Jack is picking up one jacked up dude in the top lane, picking up the Darius. Yeah, I mean, Darius Nocturne, that right there is going to be a delicious combo top lane. And we do see the Braum being taken by Baby and the side of Illumination Empire. Uh, right now, I mean, the, the Nocturne's going to be super influential. That basically means that there's going to be one person on Illumination who's hopefully, if everything goes to plan for Bemos, is just going to disappear from the game. And there we go, the second Aatrox. Yes, Woo! but where is the Aatrox going? That is the mystery game. Please stay tuned here at Overdrive League to find out the answer to that question here. We also see the Braum most likely going to backpack in that bottom lane here. Um, so I, I'm kind of liking where both these teams are going, but I love the brand pick into Braum though. That's one of my favorite matchups to play as a support main because there really isn't much Braum can do to brands. I mean, yes, he can brought the Pyroclasm, but you Brand can lose. is dumpsters. <laughs> yes, you can, losing you is can about lose. the only option. Without jungle, pro without jungle intervention. Yeah, is this the part where we complain about jungle difference, or do we wait until 15 <laughs> minutes? Uh, actually, if you watch as much high elo streams as I do, is uh, they start Is some of them start complaining at 10 minutes about how they should be surrender be able to surrender at 10 minutes? Is this Korean solo queue? <laughs> Jesus, uh, it's probably just silver anyway, but. <laughs> I mean, just looking at the bands, uh, we do see already 280 caravans being taken away from uh, Bemos. 
Yeah, we're seeing a lot of mid lane, a lot of AD carries. We have Pantheon, Shivana, Lucian, and Ezreal being taken away by Illumination Empire. While on the other side, we're seeing Jax, Talon, Wukong, Kassadin, and Echo. They really, really don't want Sail playing an Assassin. Yeah, I mean, obviously you do have the Aatrox that could possibly be flex mid lane with that, you know, keeping the smite mid lane. Uh, great job from them. I mean, it is really hard to try and... Uh, you know, predict where this Aatrox is going to go. He can go top, he can go mid, but taking away something like an Echo kind of pigeonhole Sail into playing something like this. Yeah, going through Sail's Mass history, he has zero games on Aatrox for the last two oh. weeks. So, hey, it's smart, most... Smart. Unless, yes, that can accounts are always entirely possible. We can't ever discount that, but it's probably going to UR being muted in the top lane for that Aatrox. And we're going to see uh, one of the strongest AD carries for God knows how long, Zaya going to Bing Bong. Yeah, I mean, you being able to use, uh, just having uh, an AD carry who can take control of such a large field of, you know, power, being able to manipulate those feathers and having a, a disengage ultimate and that right there just gives an AD carry such agency to roam around the map and make a lot of plays and team fights. The Vladimir, though. Uh-oh. That is one of his champions he has, be has available to. Vlad has played a lot of... I mean, it's not the greatest mid, mid lane champions, but the thing about Vladimir is you can always sustain up extremely effectively in pretty much any massive. And we're going to see a little bit of chime action coming into the Funnel! bottom lane from back back. Woo! It's Funnel, baby! Oh my god, they have Bard? Is this gonna be like a Bard offlane? Like an no, it's um, it's gonna be Graves and Braum doing the funnel with Viv and Jungle, Aatrox top, and then Vladimir and Bard in the bottom. Interesting. And it's actually Brand, Brand mid. mid. Ooh. Which right. I actually do like. Brand actually has a lot of wave clear with the WE combo, so he can exert a lot of pressure. And I'm always a fan of seeing supports pick up my personal favorite champion, even though I can't win games on him, Thresh. Yeah, Thresh is going to be a, a large proponent on how they win this bot lane. Obviously, Braum can break it and, you know, stop the the engagement. But I'm interested to see how this Nocturne is going to be able to get around the map. A lot of squishy targets for Illumination here. Yeah. I mean, you have someone I'll, like the I'll... Bard. I just feel like if you're Nocturne, if you're Brand, this is like going to like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah, I mean, you only really have one tank, and the team fight from Illumination is really scattered. I mean, you do have Aatrox, who's going to be able to... They have a, a lot, lot of, of skirmishing, though. Yeah, they're going to be able to get these lanes ahead, and that is Braum, oh, last second taking a smite, or taking Exhaust there, so... It looks like it is going to be a Bard mid, maybe? Or... No, no, it's funnel. It's funnel. Okay, so it's so a funnel. So they're just gonna be able to catch the, the, the just catch wave. Yeah. This. So so so. Oh, what, wait a minute. What's That's actually deep. what's actually happening if I'm reading this properly is we have you are being needed taking the HR in top lane. We're having baby and bronze gatekeeper playing graves of Brom doing the funnel. We have sail and backpack actually rotating down into the bottom lane, playing the bot lane carry and and support duo down. I'm really scared for this as someone like Bard allows for so much roaming potential. Obviously, you get the Meeps, who gives you mana and a lot of movement speed. And that portal that can just take you across terrain super, super fast is going to be very, very influential, at least in the early game to mid, early to mid game. The only concern is, uh, as everyone should know if they watch LCS, is the vulnerability Vlad, uh, Vlad, level one and level two. <laughs> All right, double lift. <laughs> hey, I have to bring it up, man. I'm sorry, double lift. I know Some... you're never going to see this, but... <laughs> Something I like about Illumination is the funnel being brought up against Bemos. Uh, well, you know, it is, you know, as we see in chat, Platinum Funnel lol. Brand, at least early, doesn't have a lot of wave clear from what I remember. Yes, and... he needs to hit about level 5. Yeah, without and... tanking his mana immediately. 
Yeah, like level five, get a blasting one early. I actually think it's going to be the best bet for Galby to really try to shove the wave properly because once you get blessing wand on player brand you can shove the wave extremely quickly um you sack it you w all the minions you e follow up you can clear them extremely quickly um but the again it's very very risky to be playing a, a mobile mage in the mid lane as you said they've got bard braum and graves and that can blow up a brand almost instantaneously yeah, and, and this is just going to allow them to constantly bounce these waves. Without Brand, without a heavy shove mid laner, uh, the wave is going to slowly push into their turret on the side of Illumination, and that just allows Graves, this allows Baby and Sail to, or, sorry, this just allows Baby to constantly move through the jungle and then come mid, pick up a large amount of XP and gold, then move back to the jungle. And I, I'm just interested to see how uh, introducing on this Nocturne is going to be able to play around that. Yeah, and something I do want to talk about real quick is we did talk about a little bit off stream about this Aatrox Darius matchup. Uh, it, supposedly, it it's <laughs> supposedly it's not. It, it could be the hidden OP into into Aatrox. I'm I'm really glad that we have the old Darius splash art. That's obviously a good throwback, but I'm really really interested to see this matchup only because. Dar or Aatrox is infamous for abusing a lot of the melee matchups, whether it be in top or mid lane, but Darius is seeing such a resurgence top lane due to his dominance up there, especially with the Conqueror and just in general being a large lane bully. So Darius should hopefully, as long as both of these players play correctly, I mean, Dar I mean if they play correctly, Aatrox really shouldn't be fighting Darius unless he doesn't have his Q, but... Yeah, Dar I see this advantage going really far towards towards Darius, even though Aatrox more than likely, uh, typically at least, is very good into these melee matchups. Yeah, I do want to say, though, I do like you are being muted, picking up the comment specifically for this matchup, because I feel like in this matchup, if you need to succeed as Aatrox, you need to keep it very much in a poke and we'll back off. You don't want to actually all in skirmish the Darius as we are on to the rift once again here for our final game of the night. We have Illumination Game Illumination Empire, excuse me, on the blue side taking on Bemos Commandos here. We've got a lot of spice onto the rift here for our final game. Yeah, some of you remember uh, from their last games, Illumination Empire, a lot of their strategy at least or noticing what they're strong at is trying to get you are being muted and sail ahead obviously sales taking a back seat from this game but you know you are being muted on this atrox can definitely try and carry this early game to mid game and try and transition and give you know this is kind of like a relay race you are being muted is gonna you are being muted and baby are gonna be able to carry early to mid game and then they can pass that torch off off to backpack with this vladimir and hopefully they're able to do very very well it looks like so, actually, yeah, you're right, you're right. The sale is going to be going bot lane while we do have Braum in uh, funneling this uh, baby. So we, we for for the 0.1% of chat that hasn't heard anything about this funneling concept, let's, let's give them a brief rundown of, of exactly how that works. You want to walk them through it? Yes, so basically what you want to do with this funnel, uh, sometimes you do see four supports on a team, but that's not very, uh, we don't see that often. What you want to do is you want to have a support with a very fast clear jungle or a very oppressive jungler in a 2v2 sense who can, you can go through the jungle, you pick up a lot of experience and you can clear these camps very, very fast as we already see obviously a four man help in the bot side for the red. And then you can move over, clear even more of your jungle very, very fast and by the time that the mid wave bounces to your turret and finally lands there, you're there to catch the wave as we see them right now on the mini map. They're able to catch so much experience and a lot of the gold is then funneled as it's there called, uh, therefore called, a lot of gold and experience is funneled into the one carry that you're putting, hopefully uh, rocketing them ahead of the rest of the, um, the, rest of the enemy team so that they can take over this early to mid game or even the late game, depending on who you pick and they can bully a lot of these champions around. I mean, Graves is one of my favorite champions to kind of see this funnel strat. Kaisa, in my opinion, being my second favorite, just because they do spike so hard at one item, as you do have introducing, rotating up to, to that top lane, does have that fear going in, but it's a three-man collapse, flash and exhaust. 
Flash being forced onto introducing as the exhaust come in, but he's unable to get away. That's first blood over to the graves. That's exactly what if you want to what you want to see if you're an elimination. Yeah, Double this stun is... landing in the bot lane. Hook is going to land on the backside. A lot of damage being traded as we are going to see the pullback of the feather, feathers. But it's just a simple trade. Yeah, Flash being gone on Baby and Bronze Gatekeeper alongside the exhaust is not as big as introducing on this Nocturne not having Flash. This is huge for someone like him. And this is definitely what Illumination wants to see early game. I mean, you're never going to win a 2v2 against someone like the Graves who's getting funneled. Verse and, and the Braum especially, so it's something like that where it automatically becomes a 2v3 and you have two melee, you know, you have two big people who can easily prop concussive charges, that is going to be huge for the side of elimination. Yeah, I, I just feel like looking for that gank is a little bit too aggressive coming in. From introducing, you're really early on, you know the enemy team is running a funnel, they just finished clearing mid lane. You, 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 I just think that's just not a play you should be looking forward to because you're fast forwarding super graves unnecessarily. Yeah, I don't think they were um, necessarily expecting uh, Bronze, Gatekeeper, and Baby to necessarily rotate as fast as they did mid lane. They were able to get the push and maybe there was a little bit of miscommunication there. But uh, yeah, this is definitely not looking good so far. It is obviously only first blood, 500 gold going over to the side of Elimination Empire. so. It, while it is, you know, a little bit of a, a misstep there as you are advancing the funnel, uh, it is first blood. And bot lane, though, I mean, taking a lot of trades there. No mana. Yeah, you are being needed to a lot of damage. That's a massive Q. I think that was a little bit questionable as you are being needed. Had it based yet, yeah, and Handsome Jack had, and that difference obviously showed. Yeah, he didn't. He wasn't actually forced. Uh, he was forced to back, obviously, from that early gank and taking a lot of uh, trade damage from the 3v2 there. But Handsome Jack able to back, get that long sword, and Pot allowed him to have that little bit of extra damage. And they're being muted, being a little bit disrespectful to turret damage and the apprehend range. Yeah, he is going to get the pull from the change. And we're going to see this perpetual oh. stuff. Galby TG is being taken extremely low. Is sitting on both of his pots for some reason. Yeah, I think he's just going to back right now. I and mean, we do see introducing now coming. There is a lane ward, but I mean, babies right now just constantly pushing this mid wave and they're able to get a large clear of the, excuse me, of this, uh, the jungle and just in general, but they're not getting the scuttle priority, which is something huge and great job on introducing for getting something like that. Such yeah, the, fun. yeah, the scuttle, the scuttle is arguably the most important part of at least in terms of countering the funnel with the amount of golden XP that it gives now. Mm -hmm. um, because once it tops out of XP, I think once the average level hits level 9, it's giving 140 gold. Yeah. I like this uh, adaptation from You're Being Muted, recognizing that he's never going to get a lot of the uh, damage on you. But we do have an all-in down in the bot lane. So much burst damage going on this time. But Backpack does get the return kill on the Shmurby Derb, and unfortunately it's a carry kill for a support oh. kill in terms of who gets the gun. Yeah, I mean, the Ignite coming out from Samurbi Derb, uh, just to try and get it. The heal also coming out from Bing Bong. None of the summoners from Backpack, and Sale does trade his Flash and Ignite there. So, great job from the side of Bemo's Commando there. I mean, the kill obviously going over to Samurbi Derb is not good, and Backpack is now going to be looking at an advantage. He's going to be able to hold this lane here. Can obviously TP back, but as soon as Backpack gets to level 6, it's going to be huge. Yeah, and we haven't mentioned the fact that there is a... Slow CS advantage being built for the side of Handsome Jack actually backed with no TP. So oh, actually wait. I mean there is four people top now, but with no ooh, so much damage. Ignite also coming in, but the Pyro guys is way too early. He's gonna get bursted out. Has to burn the flash. World out there is on. Are you are being muted? One more auto needs to come in from you are being you not able to get into range world ender does fall off as galby is still in position to try to make a play we also do have handsome jack coming in does have the emperor head available is going to get the q kill going over to handsome jack yeah i wasn't actually able to land all three parts of the q did get the first knock up but you know illumination empire staying a little bit too you know being a little bit too greedy there and while introducing galby using the power of not only landing it really on one person not able to get the kill of the bronze uh, definitely an overstay there and an overestimation of their ability. 
Yeah, there, there, there are still a couple things as a brand player that kind of do frustrate me. Is uh, Galby a blowing it, blowing pyroclasm on a single target, b blowing it into Brom Shield, nonetheless. So you're not getting any damage, don't get any balances. I feel like it would have been better for him to save that for the continuation of the play. But if you are Illumination Gaming, you actually didn't even get any uh, damage down on the tower. You divide a little bit of CS, but you're not really getting a lot of shutdown. They are looking for a potential invade though onto introducing here. Did you see Galvi rotating as well, but introducing definitely suffering at the hands of this. Oh, but he does get the Grom there, so. And now Ooh, Shmurby really does have hook, is gonna flash. land it, is gonna blow the flash from Baby Galby, is gonna get stunned up, but the lantern is there. Good guy, Shmurby. Uh, great job from the side of Bemos playing really far back, knowing that the Vladimir has already reached six, and. Ooh, okay, nice dodge there, but. They're playing super far back, they know Vladimir just got six, and this might actually just be a fight. Yeah, it's it's level six. Ooh, we do have a nice double man. Hemo play coming in on the back side. Pyroclasm is fairly massive as it's going to be a two for one trade at the bottom side. Baby so low is being forced away. Does still have Smite available. Could, so could still theoretically come over and steal this Drake here. He is going to go in. Is going to burst it. Getting the fire Drake. Does lose his life though on the back side. But Backpack is still here. Is able to get one kill back. But Smurry is able to scare another kill. But... That is a fire drake going over to Illumination. Yeah, great job from Baby to take the initiative there. And uh, while they did end up trading a lot of deaths there, they do get the, uh, the, sorry, the Infernal Drake there. Something to note though, Bing Bong doesn't have ultimate alongside Backpack. Backpack is going to have a, you know, maybe 10 to 20 second lead on his ultimate and no flash from both Smurby or Bing Bong. So that's going to be huge for the engagement here. Especially yeah. once Sale could finally get the all important tempered fate available. I know the last time I got the pleasure of casting a bard, the bard was popping off, landing three four man ulties 24 7. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we're, we're considering seeing the O oh, Glorious Galby. I don't think you can actually fight this. It's going to get flashed off by Bronze Gatekeeper. It's going to get slowed up, but we do have. Paranoia coming in on the backside. Zanyas is going to buy a little bit of time. Not enough damage coming in. We are going to see the Blaze pass of being proc on to Bronze Gatekeeper. But that is a Paranoia burned for pretty much nothing. Yeah, there's no stopwatch now on Galbi. And now, I mean, this is... Uh, Galbi's going to have to play extra safe. No buster shot. So, thankfully, BMOs are not going to be looking at another death on their side. But... Uh, and something to note though, I mean, Bronze Gatekeeper did end up blowing Flash there, and I mean, no ultimates were used there, but a Flash for your Paranoia and a Stopwatch is, I would say, about even. You know, it's going to have to see how the lack of Flash, the lack of Stopwatch really ends up playing out here. So just seeing uh, Wave trading down in the bottom lane here. Going to be interesting to see how this ne these next few minutes panned out because we are seeing a little bit of a gold advantage going over to the side of Bemos Commandos, which is a little bit expected um, given the fact that they do have the kill advantage, but it's only a 600 gold difference. Yeah, and also you have gold funneling, so you're going to have a, 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 a no no flame, but you're going to have a basically next to useless champion who's not gaining a lot of gold at least. So. Uh, I mean, Bronze Gatekeeper is going to be not necessarily useless. I shouldn't say that, but uh, in all gold dragging, actually, gold dragging. In all fairness, he actually has 300 more gold than Sale. Yikes, dude. Uh, Sale, you want to <laughs> use that Tempered Fate? Get a couple kills, buddy? Ooh, but we do have introducing down in the bot lane. Shmurby Derp's trying to look for a play, but the minion with crashing kind of inhibits that. He is going to go for a hook, but again, minion wave, enemy of any hook champion. Yeah, no, not in position to be trying to go back in. And obviously Paranoia, they're not up for introducing. Something I want to note, I mean, while he does have the broken stopwatch, Galbi is going for the Luden's Echo. So that broken stopwatch is going to definitely be telling some bad time for a very long time, at least. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the Luden's Echo on brand. I would much rather see something like uh, Double Doran's or Doran's Dark Seal. Um, because you're I think the not... Lost Chapter is 
not that bad only because Lost Chapter as an item by itself is pretty gold efficient and just gives you a lot of great stats. The problem is, is that you're going to be sitting on a broken stopwatch for a really long time, which I don't think obviously he was planning for. Uh, the Ludens does help you clear just a little bit, obviously with the bounce that you get from the uh, effect, but not too much to where it's helping you counter the wave Ooh, push. Ooh, does land on the backpack, play back as he just gets immediately Ooh. bursted as Bing Bong finally secures the kill. Yeah, they should be utilizing the uh, kill pressure that they have, They the, the Ignite going down there as well from Sail. Shmerby Derp, while not landing every I mean, he is landing every hook, but not necessarily on a champion, but these, these hooks have been... Not that. No, he's missed a couple hooks to be perfect. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give them ups, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hype these people up. Uh, I, we, we certainly do appreciate it here, but we do want to, I do want to quickly mention we do slowly have a CS advantage being built up in the top lane, which is equalized a little bit by the kill difference. Hmm. He does have a level lead, so he's also translating into gold, gold stats. Yes, we are. I disagree with introducing picking up that buff, but I digress. It's why I don't jungle or play mid lane. Hey, Galbi can't use it if he doesn't have a if he doesn't have stopwatch, so it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it at the point. That's a lot of turret damage compared to what uh, your being muted has. So great job from him pushing the wave constantly to try and get a lot of that damage down. Yeah, because he can't take a straight-up fight against the Darius, but his wave clear is far more efficient than Handsome Jack is on the Darius, so it allows him to keep lane priority. And to be honest, if I was Handsome Jack, I would have honestly just conceded the control ward and yeah. gotten the lane priority because that control ward is going to get killed the second your tower falls, which should be either on this wave or the next wave. I think something. Ooh, oh, but we do you have just dive him. coming in. We do have paranoia coming in on the backside. World Ender is pop flash follow up. Is going to use that E dash to get a little bit more distance, but he should be able to escape under tower. Nice stun coming in onto Shmeri there on the backside. So that's a lot. But flash apprehend coming in. Dunk is not going to come out as he decides he is not worth the dunk. In the bottom lane, we have a hook landing onto Sail. Gets immediately bursted before the temper pick can come in. Backpack trying to go in onto Big Bong, but the callback's gonna be not gonna actually come in until the very end to secure the kill. Great job from Bing Bong, and you know the tempered fate not coming out from Sail. While it is a tiny bit, you know, misfortunate for him, I there's a lot of the advantage not being taken advantage of by Backpack and Sail. They have a super aggressive lane, and they should be able to, in theory at least, bully this B uh, bully Bing Bong and Shmurby Derp around. I, I just feel like the issue is that they put they're they're playing with multiple people out of position. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that's never a good scenario to put yourselves in a team in because you're looking at a four thousand gold disadvantage to the team that's currently sitting, I believe, in last place still in the standings. Yeah, I think a lot of the, I mean, if we just look at it, I mean, Bing Bong does have the, the Storm Razors, did also just pick up the, uh, sorry, he did execution. end up picking the Executioner's Calling, thank you. So, already going to be cutting down the healing, both on your being muted from his E, and from Backpack, just in general. Just a lot of his kits, so great ionization there. And I, I mean, they do still have Super Graves, um, it looks like he's actually going to be going for Infinity Edge second. Because I doubt he's going to be looking at going... I think Storm Rager is, is a very good item on, on Baby. You can get a lot of those reloads and wait for it. And look, like trying to get this. Yeah, they're trying to pressure. We do have Galby pressuring. Tempered Fate. Aggressively. Tempered Fate is going to come in. Actually, still hasn't been popped yet. We have just them just posturing around. We did have the Rift Herald eventually falling but they, there it is so we do have a hook landing on a sail as sail just immediately meets yet another gray screen here tonight unfortunate coming in from him we have the rift herald on to handsome jack they can let the process to secure the last outer tower here great job from backpack with no tp you know he's like at this point i'm just gonna take the turret he was in no range to get there it's fortunate that they were not able to actually end up getting like a team fight there but this is looking like another turn. Oh, 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 baby is massive. Paranoia securing the kill on the backside is unfortunately 
he is left by himself by you are being muted as unfortunately he is the all he is being muted is being muted into a gray screen as a flash hook by Spermy. Oh dear god, Spermy, these people have families. Please! This is not looking good for the side of elimination. This Graves is not going to plan as they thought it would. I mean, he is getting... super farmed. He is farmed, but I mean, so are these turrets at this point. <laughs> these far, these turrets are getting super farmed at this point. So, there's four turrets to one in favor of Bimo's uh, commandos. That's like just yeah. another dragon. Yeah, it is gonna be a air drake. We have handsome Jack teleporting up to the top lane. Don't know uh, why. Uh, I mean, he's there to just catch the wave so that the turret doesn't go down, and then now he can he can push the wave back comfortably and go and buy his items. I would assume he's getting a Jerome's fist for either he has a Jerome's fist for either something like the Steric gauge, or he's gonna go something like the the um, Titanic Hydra. But it looks uh, like Steric is more common. Uh, we That's are sorry, the Steric. Yeah, we are gonna see them get another turret back, closing that gold gap ever so slightly here. But I, I do do want to talk real quickly. Junglers, please stop building Blood Razor not turret. For the love of God! Same. same. <laughs> For the love same. of God, stop! Warrior is so much better. Just take lethal tempo, you so you don't need the blood razor. That's all you need. That's literally. You want just... press the attack, so. Exactly. So, I mean, you got to make a trade off there if you're gonna go press the attack. Blood razor does have some of its own, uh, you know, some of its advantage. Another scuttle going the side of introducing again. I think that there's a lot of the advantage. Ooh, but Shmurby is by himself. Is gonna get stunned up, ampled him by the earth, by the infernal chain. But the pyroclasm. Eats the side of built elimination alive. Everyone being solo. Ignite securing the kill on Gatekeeper on the backside. You are being needed in the world ender trying to do what he can while Sail is going to barely able to escape it. Backpack secures the kill on the backside on the Galby, but he trades his own life for it. Yeah, I mean look at I mean Bing Bong already 3-0 and 10. He's picking up the, the, the support and there we go. Feels bad. Ooh, nice! He's using the spell shield to block the tempered face. So, I mean, that's a shutdown. That's not a shutdown, sorry, but that's a lot of gold there. And now he has a double kill, so he's worth just a little bit more for that shutdown. Just looking at these teams, I mean, Handsome Jack four zero and three. At this point, you're being muted. Really can't fight Handsome Jack, so you can just put him in a side wave like he's doing top lane. Yeah, because I mean, CS has equalized. I mean, you you are being muted. Does still have some potential to make a play in that lane but at this point it's a 4-0 and 3 Darius he has 1400 more gold than you it's extremely difficult for you to actually execute a 1v1 play against them unless you're pulling baby up and baby's still trying to salvage whatever farm in his own jungle that he can and that's kind of the weaknesses as Sale just eats another gray screen yeah, yeah alright he's Sale yeah, I feel bad for the side of your being muted while he did get somewhat of a lead top lane for that turret. The turret is still standing. So, I mean, that's just Ooh, standing. We do have Pima Pike being popped in the bottom lane. His backpack's trying to go to the, the 1v1 on the Bean Pong. Flash coming in is going to trade for the Feather Storm, but unfortunately, just not enough damage. His backpack gets the shutdown, but on the other side of the map, Hook lands on the Bronze Gatekeeper. But so much damage coming in for Baby as Baby's untouched in the backside. Able to secure two kills, but they do lose Bronze Gatekeeper, Gatekeeper on the backside. Galby has rotated and does have Pyrophasm available, but he misses a majority of his damage. As you are being muted, secures another kill. As could this be the infamous throw? That is so much gold going over to the side of elimination. Vladimir just picked up 600 from Vla uh, from Zaya, uh, from Bing Bong. You are being muted, picks up 750 from the Nocturne, and Baby picks up another 750 from Darius. So now, I mean, this is barren, probably. Yes, but Pyroclasm is still available. The amount of damage from that spell in a clustered area such as a Baron Pit cannot be underestimated. He just needs to go oh, he just needs to open up. Just Yeah, they need to get close to him and he's not I don't think he's in range for Pyroclasm right now and he doesn't have flash. Oh yeah, we do have Paranoia coming in on the backside. Beanbog's all by himself, though. Introducing going in on the backline is going to get get a kill. 
with the ultimate, but it's a double kill over to Baby, and the game just swung heavily in favor of Elimination. Oh, I'm getting headaches, dude. I'm remembering EU right now, Fnatic versus uh, Shotgun No Fear for uh, week one. Fnatic is down 8k gold the entire game, takes one team fight, and the game's over. <laughs> At 30 minutes, I'm getting headaches, so... Right now, Elimination taking so many, uh, you know, Fimo's getting a lot, uh, a lot of dead members right now, and they're TPing for this mid lane. Yes, they do have a massive minion wave here, but they actually aren't DPSing down the tower. The tower is going to fall in just a second here with the auto coming in from Baby. Galby's just now respawning. They're trying to pressure down for this inhibitor. They need to make a play. Oh, Dr. Baby is massive. He is able to get the disengage with the collateral damage. They are able to scare the kill inhibitor on the back side. So barely being able to escape once again from Baby. Yeah, that is huge that Baby's able to get out there unscathed. That's a lot of gold that could have been given. And now the top lane is going to go down standing gold. So just more gold being funneled into the pockets of Illumination. This is probably just a free dragon for them up in the next 30 seconds. They have priority. Although the fast backs, thanks to Baron Recall, will allow them, will allow Illumination to get back onto the map. And 20 seconds on the Infernal Drake, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it is an Infernal Drake, so... Yeah, but a lot of the crucial ultimates are down. You have no Glacial Fisher, you have no collateral damage. No, Tempered Fate is going to be up in just a second, though. So it is potentially available for BMO's Commandos to look for a play here around this Drake, but I think it's better just to leave it. Yeah, this Drake is going to be going over. It is the second one, so definitely right now 10%. Or sorry, it's... It's sorry. Oh my god. Why am I why am I forgetting this? It's 16% bonus attack and Ability power that is huge Especially for someone like baby who you're picking up a lot of these AD items and you're just two infernal drakes is gonna automatically make you a lot stronger I just want to quickly say he is 3,000 gold higher than the Oh. Hi, oh, the next highest person in the game. I mean he has 150 CS to his counterpart in the jungle and 140 against Okay, me. okay, okay, so So to explain how funnel CS works is you add mid lane CS to jungle CS to equate to the funnel So overall, they're actually not too far behind in mid and jungle in terms of CS 60 okay. right now No, it's 280 combined between the two and it's he has 295 but we do have the Glacial Fisher and Hemo Plague in the backside. Unfortunately, Bing oh. Bong is just going to drop. Fear is massive on the backpack, but the stopwatch is a world ender being popped as the as the temper fate is gonna land on to introducing who is just all by himself while handsome jack is split pushing into the bot lane. And I honestly think this is just gonna be game. Yeah, the Baron, uh, you know, that does have about 20 to 30 seconds, so they're going to have to force this super hard. No one is up except Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack is still pushing top lane. Uh, yeah, that is going to be the end of the game there. I don't think Handsome Jack could do much there, but this is the team fight that they were looking for. Baby able to get a lot of damage and backpack going straight into the back line and immediately deleting Ping Pong. Yeah, um, so, so, uh, just, just food for thought, um, as a support. If you have an AD carry, you should generally try to keep your AD carry alive. Uh, I know yeah. that's difficult into a Vladimir, I understand. Um, but I, I feel I feel for Bemos Commandos because honestly, the first like 18 minutes of the game is probably the best I've seen them play. Yeah, and uh, when you're up against uh, uh, just to just to kind of combat some of the people who are saying you know throws 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 when you're playing against someone like a funnel comp you're going to naturally get a lot of advantages. I don't think maybe bot lane should have gotten such a large advantage as they did. Zaya, you know, the Zaya thresh into something like the Vladimir, that should typically be a winning lane for Vladimir post six. Um, but when you're, uh, when, when you have a funnel strat on the enemy team, you typically do get large gold leads, something around, you know, f at least in this game, I think the highest we saw was about 5k gold lead in the, for the side yeah, of Beemo. Four and a half, 5,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, they were, um, they, they definitely, you know, they were getting those leads and they were taking advantage of the fact that, you know, I mean, Baby was getting caught out and getting really low in fights and maybe not getting the most out of it. But in the end, I mean, Baby was just so far ahead. He was able to get so much gold and he was able to get a lot of those items, which helped propel him to be able to get really good teamfight damage.
Yeah, there was just a couple of little situations where they just kind of trickled into team fights one by one and just weren't able to actually set up the necessary 5v5 that they actually need to. But we do need to give cre credit where credit is due for Illumination Gaming. They wasn't the perfect execution on the funnel comp, but when you have as much gold add onto a Graves, you just need one team fight to go properly and you can win the game. Yeah, so great job from the side of Illumination uh, Empire. They're obviously our first place team, so we expect nothing less from them other than a victory. But, you know, a little bit, you know, obviously they were playing Funnel, and this is, this is great. This is something that they can now add to their arsenal. They can show, they now show that, hey, we can play Funnel, and they, they obviously have a couple of different strategies that they can play, but now they have something a little bit more dangerous for the rest of these teams. Also, one little note for Illumination. Please don't save sales pick until second rotation. Please let the guy <laughs> play League of Legends. <laughs> hey, I mean, he, he literally, uh, I mean, honestly, I would want sale on my team. That man caught like four bands, and you know what that means? <laughs> we can play literally anything else. That is literally the freest game of my life. If, if you have anyone that's like a coach or is like you're trying to learn about pick ban, anyone who can soak four bands, that is just insane. Yeah, it, it, there's nothing too wrong with that. It's just I'm a fan of people being able to play at least something they're generally comfortable with. But unfortunately here, guys, this is the end of week number five here at Overdrive League. We will be back with our bronze and silver gold and plat night here on Thursday. So please tune in here once again at twitch.tv backslash Overdrive League 1. So please tune into that. I'm Primus. He's McBree. Have a great night, everyone.